Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with web GPU graphics programming. In the last video, I explained how to create a colorful square using the GPU buffers. In that example, I used two GPU buffers. One was used to store the vertex position, and the other one was used to store the color information. In this video, I will show you how to use a single GPU buffer to store both the position and color data. We can use a single GPU buffer to represent vertex position and color using a TypeScript array like this. Here is the, the square coordinates and the color assignment. This is the same as uh, that used in the last example. Here, in addition to the position data, we also add three floating point numbers representing RGB colors for each vertex. If we have more vertex attributes, such as normal vectors, texture coordinates, we can continue to add them to the vertex data. We only need to set a single GPU buffer to fully represent all the vertex attributes. The advantage of this approach is its simplicity. We only need to create a single GPU buffer. However, the drawback of this approach is also obvious. It does not handle the data reuse well. For example, for a three-dimensional cube with each face having the distinct color, the single GPU buffer approach requires repeating the same color information many times for different vertex on the same face. This will result in a larger storage and a higher CPU and a GPU resource consumption. So whether you should use a single GPU buffer or multiple buffers really depends on your application requirement. Here I just provide different approaches and options for building your web GPU applications. Again, we will use the Git tool to clone the source code used in the last video. Here is the download link at the GitHub repository. From this link, you can download all the source code used in the last video. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command. Git clone and uh, paste this link. You can see this will generate a WebGPU 07 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in the last video. Now we want to change the name of the WebGPU 07 folder to GPU 08 and CD into this new folder. Uh, at this point, we are going to start a Visual Studio code with a command code period. Okay, this is Visual Studio code interface. We can close this uh, welcome page first. Here, it contains all the source code used in the last video. Now open a new terminal window and we use the npm install command to restore the npm packages. Uh, this installation may take a while. Uh, please be patient. Okay, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node modules folder. Now let us make some changes to the index.html file. From drst folder, open the index.html file. First, we need to change 7 to 8 because this is 8 uh, video. 
Next, we change the H1 title here to create a square using a single GPU buffer. Here, we also keep the canvas element. We set RD equal to canvas web GPU. And we also fix its size. Now we can save this file. We can reuse the same seeder code created in the last video. So we don't need to rewrite any seeder code in this example. Regarding to the TypeScript code, we can also reuse most code implemented in the last video. In particular, we can use uh, the init GPU and create GPU buffer methods we created previously in the help.ts file. Here we only need to make some changes to the main.ts file. From src folder, open the main.ts file. As in the last example, here we first introduce the init GPU and create a GPU buffer methods from the help.ts file. Inside the create a square of methods, we call the init GPU the method to create a GPU object. From this object, we can create the device. This device will be used to create the pipeline and the render path. Next, we define the vertex data and color data for our square use TypeScript array. So we need to replace this part using the following code. You can see this uh, array for each vertex contains both the position and the color. So we then can create a vertex. We also call this the vertex buffer and use the vertex data. Not here the vertex data it contains the position and the color. So we don't need this buffer, color buffer. So we can remove this color buffer from here. Right now we only have one buffer called a vertex buffer. The code we need to make a change is the buffer attribute inside this render pipeline. Here there are two key attributes that need to be clarified. They are array stride and uh, offset. From this uh, small window, you can see that for two separate GPU buffer here, we have two array, right? The first array represents the vertex position. It is uh, very easy to specify array stride and offset. Array stride is the byte length needed to store the data for each vertex. Here, the vertex array only contains the position information and no other attribute in this array. So its offset is zero. The array stride is eight because x, y coordinates have two floating 32 number. Each floating two number needs four byte. Similarly, for the color array, we need three floating point number to represent an RGB color for each vertex. So its array stride is 12. In this array only contains the color information. There is no other attributes. So its offset also zero. On the other hand, for the array contains both position and the color information. So for each vertex, we have five floating 32 numbers two for the position, three for the color. So the array stride for each vertex will be 20. For the position, because it counts from the start, the offset for the vertex position will be zero. However, for the color, we need after these two positions, then we count the color. So these two position x and y coordinates will take eight byte. So the the count from here, we count the color, the offset will be 8 bytes here. Now we are back to the Visual Studio code. Inside this uh, render pipeline, we need to change the code for the buffers attribute here, uh, buffer attribute. Because here we have two uh, buffers, this used in the last uh, example. 
So here we need to replace the code of this part. Now we only have one buffer, you see, only one element, and with a uh, restride is 20 for times 2 plus 3. But now the attribute field become a array. The first array is for the position, and the second array is for the color. Here we set the seeder location for the position to 0. And for the color, the seed location we set it to 1. We also set the offset to 0 for the position and set it to 8 for the color. You can see the format is floating point 32 because they have two elements with the, uh, multiplied by 2. For the color, we have three uh, floating 32, so we multiply by 3. All right. Uh, another place we need to make changes is uh, set vertex buffer the method here. In the last video, we have two buffer, so we set uh, vertex buffer and color buffer. Right now, we only have vertex buffer. It's one buffer here, so we need to remove this color buffer from render pass. So we need to remove this line of the code. Now we finish the modification to this file. We can save it right now. Save the file. As mentioned before, we don't need to make any changes to the seeder code. We can use the same seeder code as in the last example. This means the seeder code does not care about the configuration of the GPU buffer, whether you use a single buffer or multiple buffers. That all does not matter to the seeder code. The only thing matter is the assignment to the seeder location here. The sign the data to the seeder location. This is the only concern by the seeder code. From this seeder location mapping, the seeder can access relevant data. Up to now, we have finished all the programming for this example. Now we can run the following command on the terminal window to bound our TypeScript code in production mode. npm run prod. OK, the bound file is created successfully. You can see the main bound.js file is about 3.92 KIB. So this is bound file is very small. Now we can click the go live link from this status bar area. You can see the go live link here. Click this link to open the default Chrome canary to view our colorful square. So click this link. Here is our square with different vertex colors. Here is red, green, blue, yellow. From one uh, vertex to another, you can see the color changes smoothly because web GPU interprets the color internally, which gives a smooth color gradient. Now we have completed our application. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source file. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create the same square using the indexed drawing method. See you next time. Bye.